Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Aquariums Unfiltered. My fellow tank mates, my name is Joey Mullen, also known as the king of DIY. And this is my co-host, co-host Tina. Or Tamara. Was, Tamara. My bad. Mispronouncing your name is my new thing. Did you notice that? I've done it two or three times now. You're just doing it to mess with me. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Not a bad week, not a bad day, not a bad anything, but I'm pretty excited about our guest today. I haven't talked to him in like a year, and before that, I think it was never. I don't know. I don't I don't know. We're going to have to run through our relationship and uh, figure out how we met, how I even heard of him. I'm really excited to see what he's up to right now, but this is a top requested guest. Um, lots of people want to have him on and have a simple conversation with him. Mm-hmm. He's been on YouTube for a few years now. He's made uh, 200 50 videos. Not that impressive. Anybody can make 250 videos. <laughs> Not everybody can get 85 million people to watch them. Mm. Not everybody can convince 800,000 people to subscribe to your channel because they want more. This is true. But our next guest certainly did, and he did it all with his creepy, crawly, reptile, amphibian, slimy little bastards. But hey, you got fish tanks, so let's get them on. Tanner, <laughs> welcome to the podcast, brother. What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot. We got a lot to unpack after all of that. Yeah, he's like, I'm, I, I agreed to this, and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, man, how you been? Pretty good. Uh, so to circle back, it's been two years. So it, was that Aqua Show? Was that two years ago? 2019. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Well, I don't count 2020 as a year. It never happened. Fair enough. You know, um, that was a long, well, no, it wasn't that long. It went by so fast. Nothing happened. It, yeah. Nothing memorable. You know, really. Um, yeah, I, th- I guess Aquashella feels like it was a year ago. But that was two years ago? Yeah. Well, that's yeah, crazy. it'll be two years this September, I think. Yeah. Well, you can go to the we, show. I mean, I can go about a year without communication with the outside world or actually talking to human beings before I literally need to start a podcast. Yeah. Please talk to me. <laughs> Somebody. Be my friend again. Please. <laughs> Yeah, when I was running through people that um, I could have on as guests at first, Tanner, you're definitely top of the list. You're right up there. But you would have been sooner if you had booked sooner, but not everybody's. That's why I sent out a schedule to a few and, like, pick what you want. I don't like that back and forth stuff where it's like, mm. uh, does this date work? Does those hours? That's awkward and annoying. And we don't get as many yeah. done, yeah. I think, that way. We got them now, though. And uh, I got to know, babe, that fat-ass frog you got, what... <laughs> <laughs> I think I is that a uh, is that a bullfrog? Yeah, very own is that a bullfrog? Yeah, an African bullfrog. It's an African bullfrog. Um, did you saw the video of him eating all the? Yeah, all that was the, the one I seen recently. I think I seen it the other day. I was like, this is the content I live for. <laughs> yeah, man, that's I. <laughs> I had so much fun filming that video, but yeah, and editing he, it. You you had a ton of fun editing and the little quips and stuff. Yeah, it was really good. For sure, but yeah, he's an African bullfrog. He's about three quarters of the way full grown, so full size. He'll be about nine and a half, ten inches long, and then about that same width. And he'll eat whatever he can fit in his mouth. So kind of like you, right? <laughs> more like her. <laughs> more like her. Yeah, and he was exaggerating nine and a half inches, babe. It's more. It's more like this big. No, no. <laughs> he's already bigger than that. No, I know. I'm just being a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I got you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Tanner's had to deal with me a number of times in my awkward personality, and um, we were sitting in. Um, I don't know if you were drinking or not. I just know I was. No, so <laughs> I I was drinking, and I will drink, but I won't get drunk. So, I, but I I can hold my alcohol well. So you probably didn't like you didn't notice anything. Yeah, neither would you have. I'm like. Totally Bro, when I when I first saw you, you were like you were you were starstruck when you first saw me. You're like this dude, you 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 know. When it. I saw you, I was starstruck yeah, because yeah, I called. Yeah, I mean, I am I, call, I called you by your full name, and you were like taken off. But you were like, "What the heck? Why does this dude know my name?" Mm. <laughs> Yeah, and I was kind of pissed with you though. I mean, we had a really decent conversation because he was doing he was doing really well on YouTube. But I was like, bro, you could do so much better if you went if you doubled down on this. Yeah, like I did. And I, and after that, a few days later, I kind of feel guilty. I fe- I kind of felt guilty because I was like, what if he doesn't have it in him like I did? What if he quits well, his job? Because I would <laughs> for nobody that knows, like I tried to get you to quit your job so you could double down on YouTube. And the and the reasoning behind that was very simple. Mm. There's never going to be another time in your life where you're going to be this popular and this talented at something so nicheful. Yeah. It's a once in a lifetime chance and opportunity. 
and you truly got to double down. You Hit have to you sacrifice and give it your all. You know, mm -hmm. eat ramen noodles for the rest of the month or <sighs> two, three months. I did it. Hot dogs and yeah. ramen noodles until I made it. Yeah. You know, you got to do that sort of thing. And you did. Yeah, well, I didn't have to eat ramen noodles. Um, <laughs> luckily, I, you know, it was a long time coming, and I worked my full time job for a while. And we could yeah. we could get into all of that, but because uh, I hated that job, and so I did that. I was frugal, and I I'm not like I'm not the kind of guy where I'm buying cars and jewelry and whatever. You know what I mean? I I invest some stuff back into the feel, channel. I feel personally attacked. <laughs> no, no, man. Whatever. If that's your thing. I mean, I, so, you know, I spend a little bit of money on stupid Pokemon. Oh, cards, but that's about it. Are we those originals? Uh, that's not, but I have all the base set and everything. So, no way. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to open up a pack, we could at some point in this, in the video. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you put it beside you because that's exactly what you want to do. <laughs> so I well, want to do it too. I, I have a whole stack there. I never got into Pokemon or anything like that, but did you know that Logan Paul's um, unboxing and all the polls he did was more viewed, his live stream was more viewed than the Oscars? That's crazy. That is insane. That is crazy. Goes to well, show, I mean. Yeah, I mean, because it, it was a little bit after you're, like, you were a little bit older. So you're you're 10 years older than me, so by the time... Like I, I remember when Pokemon first. I'm ten came years out. older than you, so yeah, you're I'm... fifteen right now. Yeah. Yep, that makes sense. I'll do the math. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you look fifteen. I, we can yeah. pull it off. I can be twenty five. I know, I dude. Can. You. It's so funny. Like everybody's like, "Oh yeah, you must be like sixteen or 18. It's like, <laughs> oh, add ten years. Like add ten years on with that. Yeah. Well, how old are you? I'm twenty eight. Yeah, I mean, you got a lifetime ahead of you. You know, YouTube's not forever, but I mean. It's definitely going to be a massive opportunity. I'm curious to know, like, you're you're far more creative than I. So, you, do you have future goals with YouTube in terms of like, are you starting a company, your own product line? I mean, everybody has, uh, you know, a dream. Yeah, yeah. So I will only talk a little bit about that. I don't like to talk about stuff like that too much before i actually start to do them and bring them to fruition not i'm not like not that i think it's super why is that Tanner? the internet steals ideas they do <laughs> they do they I'm do you, it's they really do. bad out there it's that and also i talked to my wife about this too it seems like if i express things too early before i actually get into doing them i never mm -hmm. do them it's it's a weird thing uh, so i'm the I opposite just... i gotta i gotta commit verbally i have to say it out loud yeah i need accountability mm -hmm. that's what's well, interesting well so um I'm, de I'm definitely interested in doing publications so like books and that kind mm -hmm. of thing i went to school for graphic design so i know all about making book light mm -hmm. like doing all that kind of stuff um and i'm good with photography as well so i could legit do the whole thing you know from writing the book pictures everything so that's definitely something i want to do uh i've been working on it forever but i never have time because i'm so busy with the youtube channels i'm also doing a similar thing with my website it's it's junk right now but uh, eventually I hope to do a similar thing with that and then long term uh, definitely I'm interested in doing like installation works so maybe e stuff at the zoo different things like that I, I, mm -hmm. I have some connections that I could leverage to do things like that but yeah. other, other things y you and I could talk about off camera but there's other stuff I don't really want to talk about too much uh, he's always wanted to be a male gigolo <laughs> Here, j just because you said something like that Oh, God. you hear it? Did you hear it? <laughs> well, I always knew you were a little quirky. Now that he has like Pokemon cards there and this little noise maker or something, I was like, I was right. Yeah, it was weird. It was interesting meeting you for the first time because you know, I don't know. It's always bizarre seeing somebody in person that you've watched yeah. on YouTube and that you've looked up and that you've seen a few of their videos, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, and then you like them and then you see them in person. And you're like, oh. It's it's surreal because I mean they look like that and mm -hmm. it's, they're just a, I don't know it was it was weird was yeah. the, was Aquachal the first time you've seen me in person as well yeah yeah it did was. you have this like the same type of feeling where it was just kind of weird yeah it wasn't um because like obviously I'm a fan of your work but I wasn't like oh man it's Joey like all starstruck or whatever I was like oh yeah. cool it's, it's Joey and it, it was cool yeah. to actually like converse with you in person because we we may have said like two three words to each other prior to that and uh, I've legit probably commented on a handful of your videos or whatever mm. and that was really the extent of it so it was cool to actually like talk you know what i mean talk with yeah. you in person and everything well in that setting there's so much going on yeah and 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 i definitely have probably got some add i mean and i'm so easily distracted like a yeah. little butterfly 
or something like that. You know, Bro. before I was supposed to go, I was supposed to do this podcast with him. We're scheduled, and I'm over here. You know, let me just uh, let me just finish this water change up right quick. <laughs> 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 I just shut the water off right before I, I brought him on. I was like, you know what? I could fill it up later. They're gonna be fine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm always sidetracked, always starting and stopping, and so. It's, but at those types of events, it's there's. It's, it's so crazy. loud, yeah. and there's so many people, and you want to mm-hmm. talk to everybody, and you want to have you know uh, a moment with everyone. And yeah. the only moment I had with with Tanner was like, I don't know, I feel like I attacked him or something. Like, <laughs> bro, you got to quit your job, you got to go full time, you got to <laughs> do this, you got to give it your all. What happened with all that? What uh, what what happened next? Okay, so um, you you talked to me about that all that, and I, I had been thinking about it for about a year or so, but the timing just wasn't right. And uh, I put in my two weeks notice on February first, so my last huh. official day at my full time job was um, Valentine's Day. So it's like huh. it's nice because every time that will come around, I'll think about like that's when my you know my life changed, and mm-hmm. it turned out being a really good thing because obviously everything with COVID, um, I that office that I used to work at, it ended up closing because of that. So I probably would have been out of a job anyway. Or what was it? Uh, title insurance. Oh, okay. You were in sales? No, I was doing like curative stuff. Okay. So, well, that's what I did towards the end, but initially I did uh, like title examination. So I'd look through all the deeds, look at the property maps, all that kind of stuff and make sure the legal descriptions matched up with everything. And I, I hated it. The only reason I got the job was because I had to... So, I went to school for graphic design, like I said. I was working two full-time jobs once I got out of school. And you can't really make much money with that Mm -hmm. until you've been in it for 20 years. You know, a really long time or you're in the right setting. So, I talked to my now wife's parents. was like, I want to get married. They're like, you better get a full-time job. So, I said, all right. (laughs) And I got I got into title insurance, but that was right around when I started getting serious with YouTube. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, all right, I'll just work this out for a little bit. And by the time we're going to get married, YouTube will kick off and I'll be doing that. And that's essentially what happened. So. But and I that, when did you start your channel? Like, when did you seriously start your uploading videos? So you, that 250 is not a lot of videos in terms no. of like when you think like I think I've done and I haven't even done a lot of videos. There's some channels that are within our niche that have one to two thousand yeah with like a a fraction of the subs or whatever yeah yeah Mm -hmm. so i um i started that channel in 2013 or 2011 i can't remember specifically and it it started out as just art videos and then Mm -hmm. it was 2016 i just randomly uploaded a terrarium video and it got maybe forty thousand views in a week or so which Mm -hmm. was unheard of for anything i was producing and then uh, I started watching some of your videos and I was like, well, and, and no offense to you, but I was like, if this guy's doing it, cause I could tell you're just like an average Joe, <laughs> no, yeah. no pun intended, but I'm like, the purpose. It, yeah. It's the whole, it's just it's like the whole an, purpose of it. And that was like the key to my success was who did I talk about this to the other day? It wasn't about, Oh, was it with Chris? I don't remember. It was with Evelyn. Oh yeah. Maybe it wasn't, it was never about being the best at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was about making these things accessible to everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Using ma- the hardest part of what I was doing was finding materials that was common to everybody all over the world. Mm-hmm. You know, not trying I, like I wasn't trying to show off. I yeah. just wanted to build something that you could actually replicate because my craftsmanship's horrible. <laughs> if I were to if I were to rate my craftsmanship at a ten, like I just want to get the fish in it. So maybe a three. Uh, like it looks it's gonna hold water, but it. Eh, I don't know. I don't think it looks that good. <laughs> I would say. Most of your stuff looks pretty good. That silicone job on your new Oscar tank, I don't know. That's yeah, the only that's thing. a rush. Yeah, but otherwise, I'd say you do pretty good. But, I mean, um, I'm going to add some corner molding to it. It's just a you know one of those little things I just got to do and add it. And I you know I, I rushed that video out and I was trying to get it done. And you know a lot of the times when I'm doing these big projects, they have to have water in them before the first video comes out. Sure. Because I got to make sure it works mm-hmm. and it's not leaking. And if it leaks, then that's a process that could take up to two, two, three weeks to, for curing and whatnot. But <laughs> bro, you, I was just you're, you're preaching to the choir. I I mean, if yeah. anybody knows all that stuff, it's myself. I mean, I, yeah. I DIY all the time, but, uh, yeah. So basically I saw what you were doing. I'm like, if this guy could do it, 
I could do it too. And so obviously I'm into a lot of different stuff than you creepy crawler reptiles. If you ever come down here, if you <laughs> ever come so down, insulting. Nah, I, know, I, dude, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't do care. No, nah, it's fine. It's funny. But, uh, if you ever, uh, come here, I'll make you hold the snake. No, that's the thing. I've got every time I um I don't want no snakes. I don't want I nothing know. to do with them. I, they're out my side of my house sometimes. I'm like, oh well, you live there now because I'm not moving <laughs> you. Um, but if I go to Brian Barchax, and yeah. um we're like, well he puts them in my arms and this one doesn't bite or that one doesn't bite. They all bite. Yeah. Um, nah. but then I automatically I like them and on my way home on the plane I'm thinking I'm googling which snake I'm gonna get and as soon as I get home I realize oh okay yeah you don't want no snakes. <laughs> So I bet you if I come to your place... You'll want a snake. Yeah, I'll want everything you have until I get home. <laughs> I like well, them. I don't so, want to be bet by one, but I like them. Well, I'll hold them. If, if you ever want to come to Pittsburgh, we got a spare bedroom. Hit me up. I'll board you. I got a $100 a night. <laughs> <laughs> what, you're going to pay me 100 bucks? Yeah, we're All right. bored. Whatever. I'll, I'll cook you five star meals, too. Because I, uh, I have night terrors. Lord knows what you're going to have to put up with. Uh, well... So night night terrors and creepy crawlies. So you know those toads they give birth from like the holes in their backs. Oh yeah, dude. So I got those a couple of months ago, and I uploaded a video of the one on TikTok. It went viral, and just just for no reason, because everybody's so afraid of it. Mm. That's the thing about TikTok, though. It's a it's the great equalizer. Anybody mm. can go viral on there. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wanted to get on TikTok last summer, but once I uploaded a video like, hey, what do you want me to do? I realized I don't want to be here. Yeah. I don't know what to do. And I think it was like November or December. I was like, screw it. I'll just <laughs> do what I do on YouTube and some quick little videos. And yeah. had a couple videos, you know, do a million, two million views here and there. And mm -hmm. I think 80, 80 something thousand end up following me. And yeah. then I lost interest. Yeah. So I post here and there. It's, it's just it's not for me. It's a weird thing, man. I'll, I'll go on there, and I think it's hilarious. I, I find enjoyment in it, but then I it's like how you said. I quickly lose interest in it. It's I just I love YouTube. I've been on it. I have accounts that go back to whenever YouTube was first a thing. I mean, I was a kid. I was like 13 or 14 uploading videos, and uh, it's just, I don't know. I, I personally think it's the best social media platform. YouTube's king. Yeah. YouTube's king. I don't mind Instagram. I hate Facebook. Dude, I got I don't have a Twitter. I had a Twitter just to take my name because somebody created a King of DIY account and got thousands of followers and but they were like scamming people. It's yeah. not me on Twitter. <laughs> I no longer have a Twitter account. Mm -hmm. And the one that I did have, I ended up deleting everything. I was like, I don't need to be on here cuz it's all like cancel culture on there and it's, Yeah, it's very and everybody's whining and on stuff. Twitter, like, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I have no idea what I just walked into, but I don't want to be on here. <laughs> I know that. So delete. Mm -hmm. yeah. Enjoy my handle or whatever you want to do with my name. Go for it. <laughs> Knock yourself out. I, I I'm also, not on Twitter. I also tend to think that the less social media that you're actively on, the better because your your quality will be better because you're not spreading oh, yourself yeah. so yeah. thin. And guys like you and I, we do everything ourselves. We film, mm -hmm. edit, script, everything. Yeah. And that's a lot of people don't see that aspect of it but it's like dude we're doing everything yeah well and 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 i know for a fact you and i would both both have grown far faster and we'd have far more possibilities and more business ventures etc if we had a filming team an editing team a business yeah. marketing team so i just don't so, want to do it mm -hmm. <laughs> i just well, i just i got an ego but it's not like i i want to do it myself i think it would make you enjoy it a like less yeah because i'm a creator i want to create yeah. everything yeah i'm with you on that and I, I don't know how you feel about it but a lot of people often say that to me and i i try to explain like the diy videos for example that i do you how are you gonna have a team make that video because only i know what i'm doing in the video yeah. And so I make it would have been nice to have somebody else film and take the shots and make sure, sure. it's recording and blah 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 it would have been nice but for me, when I first started taking the like the do-it-yourself projects, I had to build two. One to make sure everything worked mm -hmm. and the materials were accessible and everything, and then one for the video. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was taking like up to 40 hours to make one video. Mm -hmm. And some and the videos were only doing like 10, 20,000 views. But yeah. that was huge for then. I mean, but once I built 300 things, 
I didn't want to go back and build them again. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, get back to do it yourself. I'm like, what do you want me to build? There's nothing left. Yeah. <laughs> I built everything. I'll build things here and there. And I do. I'm constantly doing projects. I mean, yeah. so the, that's the one thing that I have to get out of my way with. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure Tanner will be able to relate. Not everything makes it to video. But damn yeah. near everything you do within your hobby should probably have been filmed. And all these little projects and fixes could have probably been made a video. But sometimes, I mean, especially for me, this is my time alone and my meditation yep. and I just want to tinker around and, and you know, maybe I'm listening to some music or maybe mm -hmm. I'm just listening to my own thoughts and it's just, I don't want to be on camera and I don't yeah. want to have to talk about it. So uh, when yep. that happens and I really got to film, I'll do a voiceover. Yeah. And yeah. I hate doing vo voiceover videos. I can but. totally agree with you on that. And it's almost like the same thing as tank maintenance or tank updates. Like, I mean, the yeah. update videos, they don't get any views anyway, but people always request that stuff and as a content creator and talking to other people who are trying to make YouTube channels, you'll see a lot of people say stuff in your comments. That is not necessarily the majority and just because they're suggesting it, that doesn't mean the videos can do well. But anyway, I find that I don't like filming the updates or the maintenance and stuff because that's my, it's like, it's a more um, intimate, personal time. yeah, more of an intimate time with your tanks and like, I, I'm, I'm focused on making sure I'm doing everything right and I'm not hurting the fish or the frogs or whatever, you know, while I'm doing the maintenance. And I, I don't yeah. feel like screwing around with the camera or the tripod yeah. or whatever. And then you start mm -hmm. to feel guilty. Like, mm -hmm. I should have filmed that because my next video has got to be fantastic and it's got to it's got to perform well. Yeah. Well, I don't know. May, I might you have, have no choice because yeah. every time I have a bad video, it takes weeks for the algorithm to forgive me. It yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah, and it sucks. Or if I need a time off, or there's no such thing as time off. I hadn't had time off in 13 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm not complaining. I love it, and mm -hmm. I don't know what I would do without it. It's just sometimes I, I wish I was a better YouTuber, and I would film everything. And, you know, maybe I should get an editor. Maybe I should get somebody filming me. See, see, that, like that. see yeah. that's what you say, but I I don't know. You're you're like me where you work at whatever hour of the day. You might have something yeah. going on in the morning, that's so you, the thing, film, yeah, you like, film at night. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you even have like having somebody run the podcast and behind the scenes and doing all that stuff and let me have the conversation? Yeah. I don't know when we're going to do this. I might have one at three p.m. I might have one at eleven. I can't have somebody paid here twenty four seven, mm -hmm. especially with filming. Like I'm not an actor. Mm -hmm. I don't. Sometimes I'm having a bad day and screw it. I'm not making a video today because I'm having a bad day. And the last thing I want to do is pretend to be happy. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the camera out and smile. Yeah. yeah. So, and sometimes <laughs> my, some, my, sometimes I want to film at one o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock at night or eight o'clock in the morning. Yep. I don't know when I'm going to film. I can't have somebody sitting there with the camera all day. You ready, Joey? <laughs> ready to go. Ready, Joey? Yeah. I guess I could get you, you but even me. then it just feels silly. Yeah. Nah, yeah. it's, it's tough, man. I, it's just, does your wife help you with any of that? No, she, nah. She's she, well. She's extremely supportive of everything I do. She mm -hmm. loves what I do, um, but she just kind of you know does her own thing, and that's fine. I don't I don't expect her to. Well, help it's me a lot of burden. And well, too, when somebody's filming for you, you don't. They don't know the exact shot you're looking for. They yeah. don't see what you're picturing and visualizing the video is going to yeah. turn out like. So he has it's sometimes hard to film. I mean, well, and he has a look and film. He has a look and feel. If I went to his house and he's like, "Joey, can you film me for my video?" Yeah. What I film and how I hold the camera and what I do is mm -hmm. going to be different than what he exactly. does. And when he's in editing, he's going to be like, "This, what the <laughs> hell is it?" It just it gets frustrating. Yeah. Like this yeah. isn't this isn't. This isn't look, I hate how it. I do yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Honest, honestly, as far as editing goes, I'm to the point where I could polish any turd and make it look like gold. Like I, I used to be able to. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was tough at first because I was really set in, in in my ways, but over the years I've really developed on what I'm able to do, which is mm -hmm. nice. But the problem is I'm always trying new editing stuff, so my editing process never gets faster. I get better at what I did before, but I'm always adding new stuff, so it's like I never get ahead with it. Mm. I will say though that right now is probably the first time that I'm actually like sort of ahead with my videos. Mm. For the past I'm ahead with the podcast. Mm -hmm. There's three episodes out to date. Did you see any of them? Yeah, I saw George Farmer, uh, which do, was. Do you like the way they're done? Like, do you like, yeah. do you like the format type of yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're pretty solid. Um, I saw Rachel. I saw Biggs. Yeah, those think, are the three. I th yeah, I think but I he's three. our. Yeah, I saw the three. Tanner's our eighth. No, if, our ninth. I think so. Yeah. Our ninth podcast we did mm -hmm. in like a week or two. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, man. 
Well, I worry because <laughs> it's it's like I'm making all these podcasts and I'm and I don't have any feedback from anybody. Yeah. Just the first three and they're liking them. And I guess it's probably better to do it this way. Because this is the way I want to do it anyways. So if you like it, you like it. And if you don't and it fails, then, oh, well, then I guess that's well, it. Let, next time. Let, <laughs> let me put it to you this way. You already have almost 20,000 subs on the, your channel for it. I don't mm. know uh, what your numbers are on Spotify or any of those other platforms, but you got to mm. start somewhere. And, I mean, yeah. you go back and look at the Joe Rogan podcast from whenever. It's not what it is today. So you'll, I'm sure it will be successful. You just got to. Yeah, well, I definitely like talking to people um, and conversating with like-minded hobbyists mm -hmm. or like-minded people. And I don't know if they have to be hobbyists all the time. I think yeah. that it would be interesting to talk to people that have a fish tank, but they come from a different... And I don't... And maybe every once in a while i got to do topic-related videos. Like, maybe at some point we'll get Tanner back and we'll deep dive into toads. Yeah. <laughs> or, like... Whatever you want. That was, <laughs> a, that was the first animal I ever kept were toads. We were keeping them... I was, like, five, maybe? Well, they're the first animal I kept, too. Really? Like... Well, what do you have? What do you have up there? Caught. Well, we got we got um, frogs and yeah, toads when we were and uh, the you, pond, there was we got frogs snakes and all we got everything place. you guys got. Just nothing's poisonous. Okay. So well, you, not you, that poisonous, but you know it's pretty cool. So we I have my pond out front here, and my wife and I we sit out there every day, like every night in the summer, drink a glass of wine, and we have mm -hmm. a frog that comes up every night, and we feed it every night. So it's like it learned that we come back, or you know we come every night and we feed it. It came back uh, just the other day, so they're smart, man. You got to get a frog. Frogs are my favorite. I was, um, I was reading. Do you think your animals dream? Mammals, I think, do. But do you believe your reptiles and amphibians, and even the fish, do you think they dream? So I think that some fish probably definitely do. I think that some amphibians definitely do, and some reptiles do. It just depends. I don't really know... So I'm very, like, I don't want to say non-scientific about it, but mm -hmm. studies are coming out more and more that, oh, reptiles are more intelligent than we thought they were, and so are these animals and such. I think that pretty much aside from bugs, most animals are a lot more intelligent than what we give them credit for. Sure, they're very primal, and they're not necessarily, like, have facial expressions and things like that, but I think there's a lot more going up, like, going on up there than what we can... Well, I think their nocturnal habits are different depending on the environment they're in. The reason I bring this up, though, is <clears throat> uh, I just browsed this article today. I think it was today or yesterday, but they're talking about how octopus, octopi, octopus, they notice that this octopus, they believe it's dreaming when it's resting, but only for very short periods of time, like seconds. Because yeah. um, as it's resting and they believe it's sleeping, it will change shape or color or and then they believe they're having like a vivid dream or something mm, I I, it would make sense because octopus are so intelligent and whenever you're dreaming your brain's kind of compartmentalizing and mm -hmm. uh packing everything that happened from your day mm -hmm. if those animals are that intelligent i mean dogs do so why wouldn't an yeah. octopus they're they could potentially be smarter than dogs well, yeah. when it comes to reptiles, there's a group of people that think reptile humans or something like that. Walk uh, earth, we don't need walk, to get into that. Walk the earth, <laughs> something like that. Is that like a thing? I don't know enough don't about know. it, so maybe I don't know. Anyway, yeah. yeah, I think um, I think the octopus thing, but the thing with like animals in general, I I don't know if they are in captivity in their aquariums. A lot of the times in your home aquarium, you'll see, for example, the fish just resting. It's just kind of sitting there, but it's straight up and down. Probably has some ambient light, and you can see into the tank. What happens when the tank goes dark and they don't have walls in the tank to, to cage them in? What do they do then? I found out in the 2000, I thought I killed everything. I thought everything in the 2000 was dead. I had to go out there at like 2 o'clock in the morning, and I usually leave a light on because I don't know. I think I, I just want my fish to have a nightlight because if <laughs> yeah. the arowana flips out, he will do it in the dark as opposed to having a, an ambient light mm -hmm. so you can see his surroundings. So we go out, I go out there, flick the light on, and every single fish is laying down on its side. Some of them yeah, are like under that. leaves. And I've seen fish lie down, but I thought I wiped the tank out. So immediately, I don't know what's wrong. So I'm like, well, water change will fix this, or wa I got to do something. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing a water change, turn the lights on. Within 20 minutes, everybody's swimming around, like laughing at me. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was a bizarre thing to see, though. Yeah, and in 20 years, I've seen fish lay down. Yeah. I've seen them rest. I know when they're doing but I've never seen a tank wiped out. It, mm -hmm. all, it looked like everything was dead, mm -hmm. all so, laying on their sides. No, they weren't breathing either. 
Really? There was no guild movement. Yeah, yeah, I was panicked. There was no guild movement. I put um the end of a stick in there and I and I jabbed at one of the angelfish and it barely moved away. I was like, what is happening? Tiger barbs are swimming a little bit. Archers up above. I was like, okay, archers are fine mm -hmm. because they're near the surface. Boy, much more oxygen and they they can just gasp if they need to. Yeah. Tiger barbs, meh, they're tough and they're tiny. Maybe whatever's in the water is not affecting them. Who knows? But everybody else just wiped out. Mm-hmm. A few minutes Man. later, though, they're like, "Huh, sucker." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're I, all right up at the front. I've definitely seen that, but so you mentioned an arowana, which instantly made me think of buddies. So I have a question yeah. for you. Um, so f from like my personal perspective, the hardest thing about keeping the animals is I get attached to them super hard. I cry mm -hmm. when pretty much all of them die. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like even the little fish, I just get super attached to them. And I know that that's how you are with Buddy, but. So the way that you do the, your gallery now where you kind of like swap out fish aside from a select few, do you find mm -hmm. that you get attached to certain fish and you feel reluctant to get rid of them or do you you just kind of remove Yeah, from I mean that? I'm moving away from that now. Um uh, over over the over the last couple of years I've realized that that's probably not the best thing I could have did. I just thought it would be the best thing for the hobby and the best thing for everybody is to see a variety cuz I only had 10 tanks to play with at the time. Mm -hmm. And I even have less than that now. Um, but what I should have done was get into some breeding and the life cycles, and it would have been far more uh, educational and, and interesting. And um, I think it would have shaped aquarium channels on YouTube much differently because everything's all about unboxings and new fish and new tanks now. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I just wonder at what point are like the creator community at large going to realize that's not sustainable? Because like I obviously I have twenty some tanks with animals in them, but I've probably mm -hmm. only doubled my collection in the past five years that i've been on youtube you see other people it's like every, you know every video is a new animal yeah. it just yeah. it's i don't know i, I find it a yeah bit i know alarming. i know that i've had definitely had a negative influence on the community in terms of that like other creators because i know i've watched throughout my career of 13 years watched if i do something within months it's a trickle down effect they're all gonna yeah. try to you know um chase those numbers and um once buddy was gone i was heartbroken and i didn't want to keep fish anymore i was yeah. like everybody can go i don't care anymore i'm not doing this anymore i don't want to so i guess i i could you know admit slightly that that followed me for a few years and it made it easier to like switch stuff out and do certain things but you know um but but buddy was also there before the gallery and he was there before i answered to the internet because yeah. once the gallery happened, I felt like I answered everybody now, and I have to do what everybody wants me to, and I gotta ha make everybody happy. And um, that intro with him was sick. The yeah, intro you had, right? yeah, that was sick. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, um, it was an interesting time in, 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 I guess, my hobby. But uh, I've got, I've got new plans. I've got new ideas and things that I want to do. Um, I gotta say that I'm not happy with my aquariums right now because I've been doing what everybody wants me to do. Like, Joey, you don't do planted aquariums. Bro, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I'm not into them. How come you don't have a reef tank or this tank or <laughs> yeah. that kind of tank or whatever kind of tank? Why do yeah. I have to keep what you want me to keep? So I And I was bending to their will because mm -hmm. I had so much going on in my personal life yeah. um, that I just wanted somebody to leave me alone and somebody to just give, cut me a break. I'll, okay, I'll do what you want. Mm -hmm. And I'd set up these tanks and like I don't even want to go look at them. Yeah, like some of them, mm -hmm. I still take care of them. I'm still out there, but the gallery's nothing like it what it was. Mm -hmm. um, and that's tough. The ma yeah, the maintenance on those plants becomes more of a chore than you're willing to. Yeah. Like you don't want to always be working on it. You want to sit back and enjoy it. Sometimes I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just not into certain types of tanks, and I was setting up tanks that I thought everybody wanted. But what yeah. I was doing is catering to a few comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. yeah, that goes back to what I said earlier cuz like I a couple of videos I did were, you know, requested based on viewers, but I'm like I got to just do whatever the heck I want to do because then I love the videos and um obviously I want videos to perform well and get a lot of views, but I'm to the point now where it's like I just make the you know what I mean? I just make the video if I like it. Yeah. And that that's enough for me, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you that, like yeah. it, it's more probably likely that other people are going to like it if you're actually well, the creator enjoying it. J Joey said it so many times. Yeah. The videos you love the most and that you think will bang and whatever, like you, you're the worst. yeah, like you <laughs> said, you said you get up and scream when you're done with yeah. the video or whatever. Like, do you I do that? Do you get pumped? I'm just like, yeah, yeah. 
like, you know, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that's dude. So there's so many videos like that, and I'm just like, man, I why don't people see the genius in this? I love this, yeah. but yeah. that's just part of the process. And I don't know if how it is with you, but I was talking to George Mavrakis a couple weeks ago, and I told him that sometimes of these hard stinker videos where they legit get like forty thousand views for the first six months. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden they got a million views. It's like explode. But they haven't. The algorithm's a weird thing. Yeah. You know, some of the, some of those kids and figured it out, know what the algorithm wants and how to how to work it. And congrats, yep. I love it. Don't but talk to I, me about that algorithm. <laughs> yeah, but then they'll get in competition. <laughs> mm -hmm. They'll look at Tanner and want to pass him. Yeah. and think they're better than them or look at me and want in competition with me mm -hmm. i'm not in competition with anybody yeah. i'm not i've never gone after anybody i've never attacked anybody i've never done anything i've only ever responded and reacted to people saying things or doing things to me mm -hmm. but um i'm not in competition with other channels i encourage them i want yeah. them to win if you look at the top 20 uh, aquarium channels on youtube there's nobody else in the hobby that can say this that that can say that they help those at least 15 of them get to where they at I just don't need a pat on the back. Mm -hmm. I'm not that type of guy that's like, and I helped him, and I did this for them, and I did that, and I had an impact here, and blah blah blah. Sometimes I talk about things, and they bring it up and whatnot, but I don't. I'm not. I'm not in competition. I want everybody to win. The internet's huge. There's seven billion people in the world. I don't need seven billion subscribers. I already got a million. You know, it's a, it's an interesting world out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I and I and I think it's important to encourage growth and get other creators to grow and stuff but there's this competitive edge that everybody wants and competition's great but it eventually turns vile yeah and they start living this lie about you mm -hmm. they keep telling their said themselves about telling themselves lies about you so many times that it becomes their truth mm -hmm. and then it starts coming out of their mouth and man, it's just a horrible yeah. thing now tanner you've dipped your toes in all of all of the niches of animal keeping yeah i don't know if you got any furry pets but you know reptiles um amphibians are reptiles and amphibians their own niches and hobbies would you say or they so go hand in hand that, well that's the thing people are always oh reptiles reptiles but like amphibians a lot of times get lumped in with reptiles but the amphibian hobby uh they're, they're their own thing definitely because, like, you got the dart frog people, which I don't have dart frogs at the moment, but I will here shortly, and I have in the past. But that's probably, like, the largest sector of amphibian keeping because you could just do so much with it. I don't know if you've seen, like, my big vivariums, like the big terrariums and stuff. That's, mm -hmm. like, you could just There's be so... Yeah, you, well, that's a, that's an aquarium, actually. Everything's grown out of the top. Oh, okay. Silver dollars going around, but... Uh, mm -hmm. You could just be so artful with it. It's it's like aquascaping. You know, you could just make this beautiful setup and the frogs aren't going to mess it up and stuff. And then, obviously, you got the bullfrogs and things. But then you have reptiles, which is snakes, geckos, monitors. I don't know. There's there's different, kind of like with how it is with aquariums. So you have people who are interested in biotopes or species-only tanks or community tanks. Yeah. Like There's so many different subgroups within it, and that's kind of how it is in those hobbies as well. So but reptiles and amphibians are grouped. Um but then you have fish tanks as well. What do you have more of, fish tanks or like reptiles and amphibians? So I actually have the most fish tanks, and then I have a couple of reptiles, and then everything else is amphibians. But I like so the amphibians the best. Would would you classify your channel as uh, an aquarium channel? No, nope. it's just it's honestly as broad as a hobbyist channel. My my whole thing just is basically yeah. yeah, basically I just show you what I'm interested in. Uh, mm -hmm. If I'm interested in doing something with aquarium, I do that. If it's a terrarium, I do that. If it's a goofy little fountain thing, whatever, you know what I mean? I just do whatever I feel like doing. And it's which, which one's more toxic, fresh the the um, aquarium side of things, or the reptile side of things? You know, it's tough because it. I, you see a little bit with aquariums. I feel like since youtube's becoming bigger it's not as bad but i remember like back in the mfk days and stuff like you'd go mm -hmm. on there and you'd post a crappy like back me at least i was 13 so i was posting oh, yeah. some stupid picture of a clown puke tank and everybody's blowing you up um i feel like it's not as much like that these days but reptile stuff is pretty cutthroat like oh if you don't have the right lighting on that or you this guy likes racks that guy doesn't like racks and uh you know what i mean i would honestly say the reptile community is probably a little bit more cutthroat yeah, i see some brutal stuff on both sides mm. um 
and it's such a horrible thing because it seems like everybody's an expert. Oh yeah. Yeah. Every, I think everybody's it's like that an in expert. Every hobby. And, yeah. and see, I I like how what you said before, and I I know people think of you as an expert. I know they think of me as an expert, and. Mm-hmm. It's like, at what point did I ever say that I was or you ever said that yeah. you were? And I honestly... I mean, I've been doing it for two... At the end of the day, we, we are going to be humble. If 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 somebody said you don't know what you're talking about, do you agree with them? You've been doing <laughs> the, it. How long have you been doing this? Uh, My entire life. Yeah, man. I've been doing... I've been keeping fish for 20 years. At some point, you know, I'm pretty darn good at what I do. <laughs> Plus, yeah. I've documented everything I've absolutely ever done within the past 13 years of aquariums on the internet nobody else is doing that like let me see your catalog yeah yeah go back through your history and Mm -hmm. see what you've what you've what you've done and what what you've contributed it's tough because i think a lot of it's just so um a lot of it is so anecdotal like i might have done something it worked for the particular animals that i had but it might you might have the same animals and it might not work for you i was talking to somebody about it in the comments the other day and i said that i think all animals are like dog breeds so you have a golden retriever for example it has all of these traits that are indicative of that breed but Mm -hmm. every golden retriever is different based on how it was raised and i i tend to think that animals are the same way especially if they're Mm -hmm. raised in captivity yeah well somebody well i think the reason why i guess i feel a little bit sour about it is because i think that like people look into the numbers a little too much and they will see you eight hundred thousand subscribers i know more than him (laughs) and i could do this and it's just because you have a huge following all of a sudden you're you're going to attract negativity and it happens with me as well yeah Yeah. well i honestly but i mean if i look at your tanks and i look at what your accomplishments are and i look at like some of what you've done on youtube and like clearly he knows what he's doing like if you take a step back and you're not a hater or you're not like jealous or envious or anything like that and you just look at things with a non-biased perspective mm-hmm. you can see okay well yeah. of course they got to where they are because of what they know and what they're yeah, able if to you do just hid the name of the person the numbers and, and just show I mean, he pretty work. much has the same yeah. channel the same size channel as mine but we have entirely different personalities as well yeah um i'm probably far more flamboyant and outgoing he's more <laughs> reserved um and uh monotone well not monotone but like he can I'm control his mo- he can <laughs> monotone, but he can he can control his motions a lot better than me i get angry and upset and happy and excited and sad and i'm all over the place in one video um you know who's who knows which personality is coming out a lot of the times it's patricia but (laughs) (laughs) yeah you have a different toothbrush for each person (laughs) it's you know it's funny that you say about different people like that i told my wife i'm like i missed out big on my channel it's because i showed my face and i thought of this idea a long time ago it's like every video i start it's like i always say hey it's tanner or whatever if i said like hey it's joey hey it's uh you know what i mean i say somebody like a different name every time so nobody knows what my actual name is it's like yo it's steven yo i I have a weird sense of humor but i I thought that would be funny but to go back to what you said about being sort of even keel like i am pretty composed for the most part but what's going up in here is a lot different than what's it's the circus up here well well, when i started making videos i didn't want to appear on on camera I was yeah. scared that people were going to tear me apart, make fun of my looks, the way I talk, etc. So I was robotic. And the second you show your personality, then you give people an opportunity to, of things not to like about you, which is oh, human yeah. nature. I like this. I don't like that. Heck, you might have said something or I could have said something during this podcast that turned a fan against me. Yeah. And I mean, not, not every word that's coming out of somebody's mouth is going to be agreeable. But it also yeah. puts you in that position where it gives people opportunities just not to like you. Mm-hmm. So when yeah. you said um, you missed out big time on YouTube and you should have did the joke thing, <laughs> I thought you were going to say not appear on camera at all because I was that like, too. yeah, because there are channels out there that never even spoke before. Like that flower horn guy mm-hmm. never has never showed his face, never talked. And he just uh, no, blew up. He, he talked in a video a while. I don't really watch his channel, but I did see yeah, I one where he talked. It's not for me, but I, I can I appreciate it. I understand and it, I can, I can, I'm like, that's pretty cool that he figured out the algorithm. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't probably has no clue what the algorithm wants. It's just the algorithm found him. Because mm-hmm. um, yeah. at the end of the day, nobody knows what to do for the algorithm. They just usually luck out with the, you know, being creative with their content. And but uh, yeah, my biggest regret with YouTube is I don't call my my fans anything. You call them Serpa Squad. Yeah. Um, there's 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 like the class well, and you grew up on youtube i mean you said you started uploading around 13 or something like you've always known it 
So you knew when you started making your own jail, you knew the steps you had to take. You mm-hmm. knew that you had to give everybody a name. They you know, a name so they can feel involved. Yeah, no, you had the you had the basics down, yeah. like the branding basics. Yeah. I didn't because I was uh, I was 25 when I started uploading. <laughs> I was I think I was your age. You're 25 now. No, I'm 28. Oh yeah, five, six, seven. Eight. <laughs> you already said that too. Now it sounds well, familiar because <laughs> he said it 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was um a little bit of. I guess growing up with YouTube, but also since I went to school for like marketing type stuff, I just already, I, d- I knew about making brands and like that kind of thing. So it was kind of just, you know, going yeah, along with that. Yeah, for sure. It's all, um, if you, if, if you would have done something different with your channel and, and, and like change some, do you think you'd be working? Like for me, I wish I worked harder. I worked really hard. I mean, I, I worked really hard for so long. Yeah. Um, like I wish I would have taken it more as a business. I guess that would be my biggest regret. I never capitalized on so much. Sure. It's not too late. I just, eh, I just feel like, yeah, well, it is too late. I don't feel like doing it anymore. So <laughs> what, would, what would be like your biggest regret? I honestly don't have any. I like the way that everything went. It kind of went how. I don't know. I, I yeah, he's still riding really the high though. Any... Just went full time. His channel's blowing up. He's his, he's at a peak, a pinnacle. And that's the thing about YouTube is it controls your emotions. Yeah. You had a video that did really good. Bet your wife knows it. Have a bit <laughs> had of a video that didn't do really well. Bet your wife knows it. You'd be down a little bit, a little bit, you know, angry, maybe a little yeah. bit irritable, well, things like that. Honestly, so for a while I thought that when I would upload a video and it didn't do as well as I anticipated, that it made me depressed but i realized that i have attachment to the videos themselves and when i'm done making the video i have a it's i don't know if you play video games but it's almost like if you beat a video game you're like sad that it's over or like it's christmas and then christmas is over you're sad that it's over it's kind of like the same thing with my videos like when i upload them i get a slight depression about it because it's just like it's my baby and i (laughs) put it out to the world yeah Yeah, i feel almost Uh, feel dirty um no for me it's more um when it doesn't do well i get upset like why don't you like it what did i do so wrong <laughs> please like it i, I like it i want you to like it <laughs> yeah i did this for you <laughs> i want it's, you to like it it's tough man because especially with something like aquariums it's such a it's such an intimate thing like that's your that's your hobby that's your life and you're sharing it with somebody so when other people aren't as excited about it as you are you, you don't really get it but then i'm like yeah i don't get a lot of stuff other people are into so it makes sense well, I realized that just that. I mean, years ago, I, d- I realized that the reason I'm not a lot of people aren't excited about these videos and excited about the ho- this hobby and what I'm doing is because I'm not making them feel like it's OK to be excited. And as a YouTuber, we're also curators of emotion. Mm-hmm. You want somebody to be excited? you got to be excited. I mean, you know, you want them to be sad. You play sad music at the specific time. You want them to be inspired. It's all controlled through the editing and whatnot. But I realized that I'm going to have to be more myself. I'm going to have to have more fun if I want everybody else to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because what's the point? What's the point of going to a party when there's no music and the host is like, "Hi, everybody. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Hope you like my tank." <laughs> <laughs> or, "Hi, everybody. Joey here again, and welcome back." Robot, robot, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's great. So, what do you think? Um, do you think you'll always have your your terrariums and whatnot in your house, or do you do you want to do something different there? You want to want to get yourself a little gallery on the go? We could talk about it off camera. <laughs> I knew that. I knew it was something like that. I knew it was uh, something because I'm I'm working on something like that too. Sure. Oh, I have one, but I mean, the, bigger. I honestly like, and even if you know I'm done with YouTube or what, you know I quit doing it someday or whatever, I'll always have some sort of gallery mm-hmm. like you call it a gallery i call it my animal room like whatever i've i've always had a collection it will always be a part of my life and it's just it's just so fun i don't know how you get but the more that i do it man i just want to do it more i i love it i love mm-hmm. the animals and it's just yeah. it's so fun yeah i want to do it permanently i i think that i want to do it off camera still though um, and I want to do it with the public and work more with kids and inspire the, the future generations and whatnot. I think, of course, I'll probably be on camera for, you know, if, if I can have it my way, probably 
I always thought I'd stop making videos at 40. Because I was like, there's no way I'd watch somebody past 40. And I got two years till then. <laughs> but I think I'll do videos for another 12 years and then call it quits on retire. That's a long time. Eh, you say that. You'll want to go longer. We'll see. I mean, I, there's, th I have so much left I want to accomplish. And I've had some devastating things in my personal life happen over the past couple of years. And it's been a real struggle to stay motivated or even to know what my next video is going to be or try to be creative or motivated in any way whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and I, um, a lot of things are starting to heal and, you know, um, pass and fix. And we'll, we'll get the old Joey back here shortly. Uh, and I know that I've people missed and they real they know something's up mm -hmm. you know something's different about me and you know they have their favorite joey and all this stuff and i'm like well you know give me a chance at life you know and, and let things be normal and things can be okay for me but once i'm reset oh man look out internet you're gonna get that old school joey where he's gonna he's be unstoppable coming. yeah he's gonna be <laughs> <un> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> flipping tables again because the videos are so good <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh uh, man, yeah, I, sleeping I, at Tanner's. I get hundred yeah. bucks a night. Snake <laughs> under your pillow. Oh <laughs> uh, man, uh, did you did you hear the the podcast where I talked about my night terrors? I did. Or was that, did that come out yet? Yeah. I think that might have been on. Oh, it was with Chris. Yeah. Octopuses and stuff. So, and yeah. So what what is up with that? Be because mm -hmm. my wife does that, or she only did it once that I recall. But she woke up in the middle of the night and she was telling me that there was something in the room, and I'm like, yeah. "There's nothing in here." Because yeah. her her mom. She doesn't know she's dreaming. This is real for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of the times, what happened that day or or leading up to that, she might have had a tremendous amount of stress. I find that mine are stress induced. Yeah. Or lack of sleep or usually stress and anxiety induced mm -hmm. and then um my body's like you're exhausted you should go to bed and then like two hours later it's like <laughs> kidding <laughs> kidding the there's night. an alligator in the bed that was another recent one <laughs> an alligator? It was on, we were watching a documentary and it had an alligator in it and then you were like we're like the alligators in here yeah, i've had oh, snakes under my pillow was what did with me for the longest time because they yeah. all they want body heat um and uh <laughs> And you start brushing <laughs> under your pillow and like feeling under it, and you're like, "Don't you see them?" And I'm like, "I don't no, know why I do no, that because I'm not gonna grab dreaming. it. I'm not gonna like <laughs> wrangle it. I don't know no. why I do that because if I put my hands <laughs> under there, I'm just gonna be like, Ugh. <laughs> it's real. It's actually under there this time." Yeah, yeah, snakes and um, it's always uh, snakes and you know uh, I did crawling. octopus, uh, alligators, bugs were on me a yeah. lot of times, um, and then the most bizarre that I like telling the story was there was a bomb in my underwear. Oh uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> that was brutal. You, you ever oh, have yeah. any? You ever have any dreams or nightmares about when those your uh, gar jumped out of the aquarium? Because you said it used to be in your room. Oh, yeah. The night terrors were then too. Hmm. Um, it the gar jumped through six millimeter plate glass, so quarter inch. What a thirty gallon tank is made out of. Or actually, what a fifty five gallon tank is made out of. Um, smashed through it and landed on the floor or in the tank or knocked itself out. I mean, this was years ago. I'd have to refresh my memory here, but um, I thought it was dead. I woke up in the middle of the night. Oh, the rays is what caused problems, not the alligator. The alligator guy was this is a one-time incident. I woke up like, what's going on? Um, and I thought the alligator guy was dead. So I was like, put you in a bucket. It was a dry, empty bucket, like a water change bucket or something. No, I didn't. And I, it wasn't a water change bucket, it was just like a fish tank bucket, like you put your stuff in there or yeah. something. Chucked him in the bucket because I thought it was dead. Put him outside. This was in October. No lie. We're getting frost outside. I wake up the next morning on my way to work. Don't want to hear the bucket move. Do -do -do -do. Like, what? You're alive? <laughs> Take him in the house, put him in a Rubbermaid tote. This thing was outside in the cold for 12 hours. Alligator guys are survivors. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it's not my time to go. Uh, I had nice. a buddy end up coming to get him day or two later no it was the the rays in the middle of the night like to go up and they splash at the top because they're tasting and they're trying to find food they're like little puppies mm -hmm. looking around like little annoying raccoon water raccoons just <laughs> everywhere trying to get into anything eat anything they can and that's it would used to have a, a problem with my ex-girlfriend is she'd wake up and she used to think the rays got out of the tank and they were on her like smacking around i was like no that's just me <laughs> <laughs> that's just me but, <laughs> it's just me looking for a kiss. A wet kiss. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> let's, um, let's do a pull from that, uh, from that Pokemon deck. 
Okay. From that so, from that pack you got. So before I do, I got a ton of them over here. But before we do that, what can a dude do about getting a uh, what the heck, a stingray barb? Well, I got about forty of them. I'll tell you what, one? I'll ship you one down if I if I if I get one free night stay. All the right. day of the night of my choice. All right, send me three. Oh my god, three nights? Oh no, three barbs for one night of my no, choice. Three, three barbs for three nights. Three virus for three nights. Well, let's do Valentine's Day. No. Okay. <laughs> so I, I just, I pulled it out. It was off camera, okay. but so I pulled okay. it out. I'm going to do the card trick. Do you know the energies or anything uh, like that? I mean, that? you put three behind or something like that? Well, no. Do you know the energies? Like, you, we, you could guess the energy. Uh, Like red energy. I know the colors, I think. Red and yeah, green. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you can like give that. it. You get, what, what color? Oh, red. Probably red. It's usually red. red. Okay, so fire. Tamara? Yeah. Oh, fire. You know? what, do you think? what were the fire? Choices? I think it's fire, blue? earth, and water. Is there blue? Yeah, I don't know. I don't follow Pokemon too. There's closely. water, leaf, electric, psychic. Uh, oh, how are we supposed fighting? to guess? There's too many options. Whatever. I thought I had a 50 50 chance. I'm, I'm going to say fighting. I, I didn't look at it, but I'll say fighting. fighting I'll, she, I'll do blue, I guess. Blue? Okay, she yeah. says water. Water, okay. Electric. Electric. Okay, so we got electric. We got now, as you go, what are these worth? Do you know you do you know values off the top of your head? Uh, pretty much if like fifty cents, ten. Not, cents. Yeah, I know not, some of them none are. of these are really worth that much. If we get a good card at the end, uh, I might like know the value. Points. But yeah. yeah, this is from Burning Shadows, which is from twenty sixteen, I believe. The whole pack is twenty sixteen. Yeah, this one's from twenty sixteen. Uh, I think the next one is. Uh, no. the Still next one's cool the reverse. I have no idea which one. Oh yeah, you get a That's holographic. That's reverse. And is that a holo? Nah, this is stinker. It's the holo that you did, the did that you did, is that any good? Nah, it's no good. It's just it's a reverse holo. It's I think it's oh, a common, reverse. It's not a character. Uncommon. Okay, okay. Nah, it's nothing good. The Pokemon movie just came to Netflix. I watched that with my son the other night. <clears throat> other day, actually, he didn't have no school, so we just laid on the couch, and like a dad, I slept while he watched it. You open your eyes for the end. Yeah, I was I was there for the <laughs> beginning and the end, but for the most part, I just napped. <laughs> Man, you got to uh, do you do you have a hard like? Cause I I don't have kids yet. Do you have a hard time balancing your YouTube life with your family life, or is it different these mm. days? No, I mean it's always been. Um, you know, sometimes if if I've got too busy of a week, sometimes everything overlaps a little bit, or I gotta go so I can catch up on a bunch of stuff, but. Um, the way my the way my work week would work out before I went full time on YouTube, which was like seven years ago or something, um, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd edit videos and do website work. So I, I do my website, and you do your own website stuff too, eh? Tim? Yeah, I uh, I actually did web development for I think four years. I taught myself okay. CSS, HTML, Java, all that stuff. Yeah, I'd wake up and I'd work on websites, editing, then go to work, get home, eat, and do more of that stuff. Play with the kids a little bit. Um, cause I had to, I was doing two full-time job or I was doing a full-time job. Plus I wanted to like try to make something out of YouTube. And then on weekends was my chance, was my time to, uh, actually do videos. Nowadays, my kids are at school till 3 PM. I do my work before then and they're old, they're teenagers now. So I don't do it when they go to bed cause they go to bed after I do. Yeah. So I'm an old man, but, um, yeah, I typically try to get everything done throughout the day. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, um, I've timed my water changes down. I mean, I can change all the 120s, 500, five of the 120s, 50 gallon, 50% water change in two, three hours, something like that. It's not that bad. So if I go out there at 9 a.m. with a coffee, done by lunch, yeah. you know, make a video, and that's the end of it. The next day I'll do the 2000, the day after that the 700, then the saltwater tanks, and then the 40s, and the Oscar tank was, well, well I was waiting for Tanner. He started doing that. i got to fill that back up, but... Basically, when it comes to my freshwater tanks, most of it's just water changes and feeding yeah. the fish. You know, not too, not too complicated. Well, I, uh, I found out. So I always had this reoccurring dream that uh, my I can't find my wife. It's like something happened and she's gone or whatever. And so we looked it up, and basically what it means is that I feel guilty subconsciously that I'm not spending every waking moment with her because well, I'm that like... that's that's definitely a <laughs> real thing because I spend more time with her. And uh, and I do feel guilty for it a lot. I, and I talk to her about it sometimes. Like, 
I got to get outside and I got to get out there more often and I got to do more and I got to work harder and, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's easy to watch things slide away. And for the past two, three years, I haven't really put in a ton of effort because I'm satisfied in my personal life. And now you just have to find balance, Tanner. I mean, you got to find that, that, that happy spot between your channel and your hobby and time with your wife. The biggest advice I can give you is there has got to be at least once a week a date yeah we do you have yeah you yeah, we do. yeah so i mean and if you are doing that and you are being a good husband i mean if you are i mean odds are you're probably not doing anything wrong no you probably no. spend a little bit too much time doing this but i mean yeah could be doing something worse and you're working from home you're home all the time yeah so that that was a weird adjustment because like she works from home now too and okay. uh so she's always home i'm always home and it's it's kind of nice but it it will be uh bittersweet when she goes back to the office yeah well it'll allow you to focus not feel so guilty for working throughout the day and uh she'll probably get more done as well working from home isn't easy yeah you can't have other people there with you Mm because i'm the type that if nobody's here i work non-stop until somebody's here yeah and then um i feel more calm when somebody's here they don't have mm-hmm. to even be around me you just gotta be in the house somewhere yeah just, and i feel yeah. better mm-hmm. um yeah but i also slow down on work and i i pester everybody in the house if like <laughs> when my kids are home from school or you're doing something i'm always pestering i'm always pestering what you doing what you doing or trying to wrestle my son or <laughs> make sure that he knows i'm still stronger <laughs> so <I'm> just <laughs> silly stuff or this guy what do you get gary v you'll never let him win in basketball it's like you always have to win you oh, know he that? If, he, if he well the thing with well i some yeah i can't even say it because he might watch but sometimes <laughs> i let him win very rarely because i want him to know when he beats me he beat me yeah he won mm-hmm. um and he's just as brute and he does beat me at stuff like video games and stuff which really sucks because i was used to be good at video games but when he wins he's ruthless he <laughs> what do you play ruthless whatever he tells me to <laughs> um fortnite and yeah minecraft and Oh, Call dude. of Duty and GTA and we started playing Sackboy again. We used to play Little Big Plan is what it used to be called. We used to play that. But he plays on consoles. Um, yeah. But he really likes playing board games and card games and stuff like that. So we play a lot of that too. Mostly at nighttime and it's, it's kind of fun. But we, we play a variety of games where sometimes there's no winner. You all have to play as a team. Yeah. And, and you all work towards one goal. And those are the worst. Yeah. Those are the worst. You think, oh, this is going to be great. We're all going to get along and have a good time. We're all going to win together. But it's like you have responsibility and you're not doing your part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So do you, you, know, you once in a while. What's that? I was just going to say every once in a while I let them know they were adopted. Uh, <laughs> they weren't. <laughs> They're clearly my kids. They yeah. look just like you. <laughs> do you, you like to cook? Do you cook all the meals? Mostly, yeah. What do you like to cook? Depends on the time of the year, but in the summer, I'm all about barbecue. barbecue. Anything I can put on the barbecue. Even the vegetables, like asparagus, potatoes, I like dude. carrots, anything. <laughs> dude, so today I made myself a cauliflower steak. I don't know if you've ever done it, but it is... it, Dude, it slapped. It tasted just like a steak. I gotta, how do I end this? How do I... And I've this heard whole this podcast. is a thing recently. Um, I've heard of like cauliflower. I can't wings talk and to. Stuff. I thought I liked them, and then he said cauliflower <laughs> steak, and then I cut dude. It I my feel mouth. Like, <laughs> I feel like cauliflower I've never had, I've, has such I'm a distinct you, don't taste, I, and I don't understand how it can taste. It has no like taste. Meat. Okay, so so let me put it to you this way: I eat my steaks medium rare. I love yep. steak, but you got to try it. It's legit. Yeah, he's right. I mean, I always tell you you got to try new foods and yeah. stuff, but. It can't be horrible if a lot of people like it. Yeah, and I've heard that like the texture is even like the same. Yeah, hit hit it hit hit it with a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. I like to use Himalayan salt, and then hit it with a little bit of Lowry season salt and uh, smoked paprika because you get that smoky flavor. Grill it till you get the nice uh, hard Basically crust. Basically, add those enough sides. flavor to it so it no longer tastes like cauliflower. Just add steak spices <laughs> in it. it becomes not, steak. not a whole lot. <laughs> then drizzle whole lot. steak juice on it, <laughs> <laughs> and then like cover it with steak. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm telling watches. you, man, it's good. And then I also make these uh, black bean quesadillas. They might be better than the meat quesadillas. They're really spicy, I mean, I, though. I, I do like cooking uh, barbecues and stuff, but when it's not barbecue and it's more so, uh, you know, wintertime 
or cold and you're not outside as much we'll barbecue in, in the winter even until we barbecue until the propane's gone mm-hmm. yeah um I, I know i like wings and we had wings and pierogies tonight um potatoes please yeah, pierogies i don't eat yeah. pierogies but pittsburgh is like the pierogi capital of the world why don't so. i like pierogies I, I don't know. Never been crazy. Maybe you just never had them cooked right. Just take, get, get, get a little bit of olive oil in a pan, just a tiny bit. Dump some pierogies in. Cook them up. Flip them. It's I'll really try. It's simple. I, I'll, yeah. With you, some uh, sour cream. Mm. You and my wife can eat them. I'll eat something else. <laughs> and I like, I don't know, poutine. I like all the like the comfort for Canadian foods. I like shepherd's pie. I like making mm. that. I like a lot of easy yeah. stuff. But I, I stick to comfort foods yeah. that are really fattening, um, that make me regret. Cordon Life. Blue chick- oh yeah, cordon chicken. blue. I like making that a lot. So chicken breast, and then you stuff it with uh, ham and cheese. Yeah, mm. that's pretty tasty. All easy stuff. I mean, I'm not a chef. I just enjoy cooking tasty, st- tasty things. And so every once in a while, I make it look pretty and adjust it on the plate. And <laughs> 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 Man, but, do you like uh, apple pie? Mm-hmm. Like warm apple? Apple, yeah. apple pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like apple pie. I like all kinds of pies, I guess. Um, I th- I'm not. I, I used to love. I, I don't love pastries as much as I used to. I loved cookies and anything flaky and, you know, pies, anything at all. Oh, uh, dude, bear claws. Bear claws. Yeah, you like bear That's, claws. That's um like a like a honey bun. Is that what that is? Uh, it's it's like a, I don't know how to. Ex- it's like a flaky thing that kind of looks like a hand and it has marzipan in it. It'd be With- interesting to um, whenever I go to the states, I'll have I'll go to like some of their fast food places and mm-hmm. a lot of things are so different mcdonald's from canada to the united states way are better. night and day yeah yeah you got to have our mcdonald's it's way different it tastes way better well i, I so i don't know because i know you guys said you don't really get out that much during the quarantine we legit mm-hmm. may have had five meals that weren't cooked at home and none of them were fast food except for chick-fil-a i don't know if you really count them though Oh, like you went? You only went out to eat five times. Yep. No, we eat out every week. Yeah. yeah once, bad. well, things opened back up and we went back out. Yeah, fine. Right it, away. Well, I'm th- I'm not always responsible for cooking, but we all assume that I'm going to be doing the cooking every once in a while. If I, I forget to like take something out of the freezer or something, like, oh, you guys want, I don't know, a pizza or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, for the most part, we, you know, and and the and the and the the most horrible part of like the way I cook and the stuff that I eat is. I have a background slightly in fitness, so I know what to eat, yeah. and I know how to stay in shape, and I know how, I just don't do any of it, <laughs> and it, it is so hard for me to eat healthy, and I know exactly, exactly what I need to do. Yeah. I just don't want to do it because I like chips. <laughs> I don't want to have I don't want to have chicken and rice because I really I'm in a relationship with pizza. You know, I <laughs> have you. Uh, well, that's one of the things, Taylor. You'll have to come up here at some point. Yeah. You know, when 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 uh, there's no more travel restrictions, sure. and some of the things you're gonna have to do is try our snacks, um, and down. some of our types of fast foods and whatnot, like donairs and poutines, and you know, we, we eat a lot of fish and chips. Not like um, American fish and chips, but it's a little different. Um, is it more like British? More like what yeah. they got over there? Yeah. yeah. More like English fish and chips. Well, I've never been out of the country, and I've never been on an airplane, so fly me up. What? You've never been on a, you know, well, I guess, you know, one of the things about the reptile hobby is there's not a lot of shows, and there's not a lot of clubs and stuff, and they don't fly a lot of speakers around, But because he would be booked, Tanner would be booked all the time if that was the case, Mm -hmm. and you'd be flying everywhere, all over the world, but they, it's just different, it's just different. Yeah. We're in, uh. The aquarium hobby's taken me all over the world. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I would never run. I mean, like I, I guess pending, we'll see what the heck goes on with COVID. But like, I'm supposed to fly down to Orlando for Aquashella and speak there. So I mean, yeah. you know, we'll see what goes. Yeah, on I'm there. supposed to too, but uh, same same boat. Do you have a ticket booked or anything like? No, a no, I gotta talk to Sean a little bit, but uh, yeah. I mean, I I'm said not I, so sure I said that's I gonna happen. Go. I mean, Florida's wide open, but. There's a hot spot down there Where right now for COVID. Is. I'm not going down there. <laughs> it's, if, I, if, it's, if, if, it's that. if I have to quarantine when I get back, I'm not going. Yeah. There's yeah. no way I'm staying away for – because if I go away for t- um, a few days, like three, four days, and then when I come home, i got to quarantine alone for 10 days, that's two weeks, potentially up to three weeks before I see my children. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Like, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. Or see, I, before I see my tanks, Yeah. I guess I could put you in charge of them, but, I mean, <laughs> that means 50% are gone. 
<laughs> no. Man, that's crazy. It's not that bad. I so, think most of them would survive three weeks without any food or water changes. Man. They're healthy. They, yeah. They'd probably... Well, the big guys would definitely do three weeks. The rays, for sure. Rays are so... Um, so resilient to mm. everything You're so adaptive to environments i mean if a ray is pregnant and there's not enough food you know what it does it absorbs Absorbs the babies yeah you told me survival savage (laughs) yeah it's it's, uh, or they'll abort them yeah i've had that yeah they can get stressed too and abort but interesting you can't you also can't stunt a stingray and they'll only grow based off of not the environment but the diet Mm -hmm. how much food you're giving them yeah so you can technically control their growth. You can have little stingrays for a long time. It's not healthy long term. Shortens their lifespan if you're not feeding them properly. But did, can you stunt a frog? Uh, I'm sure you could. Yeah. I mean, I, I what feed is all. Uh, what is your biggest concern with the with the uh, the big fella, the bullfrog? My biggest concern. Yeah. Like, what's his biggest? What are their biggest killers in hobbyist hands? Probably just drying out. Or yeah. E- either that, or if you don't uh, keep the water in his tank clean, and he he could get like red leg or something oh, like that, okay. like an in- so an infection. You love him, right? Yeah. I got a question about how much you love him. Sure. Got to keep him wet. I'm not eating frog legs if that's where you're going with. No, <laughs> no, no. I'm not into that stuff either. I mean, depends on how much money's on the table. I'll like chew it up maybe and swallow it with my nose plug, but that's not where I'm going with this. Sure. There's, he's drying out, <laughs> and there's no water in sight. But you know if you just lick him a few times to hydrate him a little bit till you get him to water, he lives. But if you don't lick him... I'd lick him. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so, so he's not a uh, he's, he's not a Colorado River toad, which are the kind, you know, the ones that people lick to get, uh, like, hallucinate. hallucinate. Yeah. yeah. So it, I wouldn't have any adverse effects from him from licking him. But Would something, you ever get one of them? Yeah, I'd get them. I wouldn't lick it, but they're they're an awesome looking toad. Yeah. But the the thing that's kinda cool about the African bullfrogs is like so they're they're from Africa obviously and what they do is they spend most of the like they'll spend the dry season completely underground and they cover themselves in like an extra layer of skin that mm-hmm. has almost like a cocoon, if you want to put it that way. So they're just like in a little cocoon and then as soon as it rains they just emerge from the ground. So like they could be that way in a tank for quite a while but uh um, yeah he'd probably just go to hibernation he'd probably just realize he's got to protect himself yeah or whatever mm-hmm. and, I'll, and burrow into a little cocoon i'll tell you what i'll send you a message on instagram of these videos so what they do in the wild is like most animals the males have to battle for the females and territory and, and such the males will bite onto each other and they give them like suplexes so it's like a it's like an <laughs> mma match yeah. of them fighting it's crazy well, I think Canadian, in Canada we got bullfrogs. I remember catching these massive bullfrogs when I was a kid. Yeah. I don't know. If, I just remember being told they were bullfrogs. Maybe they were just a massive frog. Mm. They were big, though. Like, yeah. you could hold on to them, and they were chunky. I think. Um, I think and I was guys... always told, can toads give you uh, warts on your fingers if you touch nah. them? Nah, well, that's, that's a myth, not true. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, I don't have any toads, so I don't know. But I always thought you could get uh, warts from touching toads. We got a ton of frogs outside, like tons of frogs. Like they're adorable. Like it's something like I, I could deal with having a frog. It's almost well when I was doing the uh, the pond out there and I ripped up all the grass. Mm-hmm. It was almost like an Egyptian plague of frogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was bad. They were everywhere, and I was and I like was trying to catch them. And all. I was walking, <laughs> and I was like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what, I don't think I stepped out on any, but that's what yeah. it felt like. Like I was like, every step I'm killing something. But it goes to show, like, what when you're walking across your yard, you don't associate it with life and how much of life is underneath your feet. All those worms and snails and bugs and frogs yeah. and salamanders and everything that's under there. And every step is potentially killing hundreds of something. I always feel bad about, like, mowing the, like, mowing the lawn. You know what <laughs> did it for me was... Um, <laughs> Oh, and this is an old one. I don't know if Dan, you guys know it. Bugs Life. Did you guys ever see that? Yeah. When I was like really a Bugs little. Life, dude. Yeah, yeah, that that was like that's when what I was that's peak when childhood that came oh, out. Well, before that, it was um, what was that? Uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That's that a was a uh, that was a game changer to me too. I was like, man, all that stuff's happening down there. <laughs> it's like I want to watch my step. I got over it and then you know played soccer and stuff. <laughs> it wasn't that impacted, but. Uh, 
Yeah, what do you do for ho- hobbies outside of this? What do you do for fun? Do you like, I don't know, horseshoes or something? What do you do for what you- <laughs> Pokemon, obviously. What else? You uh, game. I think you game. You would you, you uh, your ears perked up when when I said about gaming. And yeah, stuff. so I don't do it that much now just cuz I don't have that much time, but uh I'm really stoked for all, like this year's the 35th anniversary for Zelda, so they're coming out with all kinds oh. of new games. Um I'm pumped for those. Uh yeah, I don't know. Like, really, just I every Saturday I go and hang out with my brother, and we play games together. Usually, just like retro games that we played when we you were kids house? and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like what? Like Atari, Nintendo, Super Nintendo. Uh, like S- Super Nintendo, like NES up to current consoles, basically. Uh-huh. You know what I never really liked was Sega. But in order to play, I think it was Mortal Kombat at the time. You had to play it on Sega. I think Cause it, it had something now, like that. Well, the thing was, is the Sega version. No, had Sonic. Oh, Sonic. Yeah, yeah that's what it was. was. Sonic. Well, because you said about Mortal Kombat, on the Sega versions, when you'd punch, like, you'd see the blood. But on mm-hmm. the Nintendo consoles, you had to, like, go into the codes and unlock the blood because otherwise, like, they, you know what I mean? It was restricted. Yeah. Dope deal. Man, that's brutal now. Did you play the latest one, Mortal Kombat uh, X I, or something like that? Dude, I can't even, I can't even get into that. It looks so real that it's disturbing. I... Yeah. Well, I play with my son here and there, and I try to play video games, but I also have to hold off because I used to be addicted. Um, <laughs> you know, I was I was 25 years old, and I get home from work, and with and and every once in a while, not every once in a while, almost every night, for like three, four, five hours, me and my buddies would jump on Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Call of Duty. I'll have the headsets on. Man, those lobbies were so much different than I could imagine today. My buddy wanted to start up a gaming channel. He's like, man, this is so funny. We'd, we'd kill it. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. We never did. And, man, am I happy we didn't. <laughs> the things that came out of our mouths, oh, my Lord. I'd be making apology video after <laughs> apology video. Man. Jeez. But it was more, it was different than it was more, like, not acceptable. But, I mean, it was, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe that. It was just different. Yeah. Well, but yeah, I mean, back to the hobbies thing, though. I mean, it's a little bit different now that I have my own house. So, like, a lot of time I'm just legit fixing up the house, you know. Mm-hmm. Our so house. Broke, yeah, not, needs not, to be improved. not that it was a piece of junk when we bought it, but, man, it's like a, it's a shadow of what it was when we got it because I fixed so many things up. And you're a handy guy. I got to say, I hate mudding walls. I yeah. hate it. I hate well, it. Seen. I hate it. Well, <laughs> um, drywall. And, and and doing the applying it is tinging. fine it's the sanding i hate mm. it well you don't sand you get a wet cloth and you wipe it do that next time i'll try it i have some more no, that that's I gotta do. that's good I'll that's a it. game changer <laughs> so oh wait, you don't do that like a wet cloth? well if you sand it you're gonna have like all this cocaine every well it's not cocaine but it looks like <laughs> yeah, this tiny micro dust yeah. everywhere forever and no matter how much you clean it up they're always gonna find more somewhere yep but you just take a wet cloth and wipe it once it's dried of course and wipe it, wipe it flat. I'm telling you, it, it's exactly what people do. I'll try it, and it I'll works really it. well. Just a warm cloth. It's so fast too. No and sanding needed. I also like to do a lot of yard work. So like, I, I shouldn't have said cocaine. We're gonna get flagged or something. I don't know. You could bleep it out. I don't want to edit any of it. I don't like editing. I, I don't edit the podcast unless you want me to, or you want me to take something out, or you don't want it up at all. I say that to every guest. Like, if you don't want this up, it's not going up. Mm-hmm. Change your mind. Let me know. But, <laughs> well, it. it he didn't say anything. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't say anything. Hey, YouTube. Um, he didn't say just anything. pretend that wasn't He bad. said co Cain. <laughs> so, From so Cain and Abel. I, I've often wondered, like, if... So, if you go into the back and you put in your own... Um, what the heck? Subtitles? And you would type it oh, out yeah. as though you're saying something else? Would it yeah. think that you were... You know what I mean? And so then yeah, it wouldn't it does, count. Yeah. Well, the the... The translator, the automated translator for YouTube is pretty good. But the one thing that a lot of people don't consider with the uh, closed captions is I think it takes three weeks. But over that course of time, Google picks that up and it helps with the search rankings and the relativity of it. Plus the description, the first, I don't think, I don't know, 13 lines or something and the tags and whatnot. Yeah. Closed captions are definitely considered for sure. I've I've recent videos i've been trying to actually go in there and put them in myself because i was thinking that they were making the videos perform better because it's like Mm. if i said something Mm. that for whatever reason sounded like profanity it wasn't thinking that's what it was or well i mean i don't i don't even swear in my regular speak but like you know sometimes on there it thinks that i do 
It's definitely looking for trigger words and curse words and certain words because it, it takes nothing at all to get demonetized. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, and you know, demonetization sucks. Not only do you not earn any revenue from that video, but it also can change your RP or your CPM for future videos and moving yeah. forward. So, it's all. Have you um, been demonetized? I've had a bunch of videos, yeah, with monetization taken down, w especially when that ad apocalypse happened. I went um, the month prior, I think I made like 10 grand, and then the month after, I made 100 bucks. Yeah. Not even $100. And I was like, oh, well, there goes my career. Um, also, I have the galleries half done. <laughs> I've got this building outside. <laughs> so, and I got a lot of bills to pay for, but, you know, um, I've definitely been demonetized, yeah. Um, or limited to no ads, that sort of thing. Sure. And um, those are the types of videos that are incredibly damaging to your channel. So when you when you address or speak to drama or something like that, it'll get tons of views. But demonetization is like fifty percent chance that it's you're not earning revenue off that video type of thing. Sure. And your future videos are going to be iffy as well. I, my channel's been whitelisted for a long time though, um, so I don't have to. If I upload a video, it's automatically monetized. There's no waiting period, no checks. Yeah, same uh, nothing with like me. that. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't realize. Well, you started a second channel like a couple months ago. Yeah. For additional stuff, do you regret that, or do you still like? Meh, that was worth it. Um, I don't really upload on it that much right now. I'm still trying to figure out what my groove is for it and what I want to do. But honestly, no, I don't regret it. It's basically just whenever I feel like uploading something, I'll put it on there. You know. Either did you that. Find it was, do you find it was complicated to start a second channel? I forgot everything. So, no, I didn't have any issues doing it. And then, like, within, you know, a day or two, I had 8,000 subscribers or whatever. Oh, and did you, you advertise it? Yeah, I did. You mentioned yeah, it, yeah. I, yeah, I talked about it in a video or whatever. But I was thinking to myself, I'm like, man, if I was starting, like, a new channel right now, what, what do you even do? Like, how do you even get through all of the noise? Because once, it, once you're established and whatever, you're good. And I guess if you get a video that does well, whatever. But... You know, since even when I started, there was not nearly as many people in our space as there is now. And and even, yeah. like, especially with terrariums, there weren't any terrarium channels, really. And I kind of, I mean, there was other people doing it. I don't want to say that I really started the trend, but... You yeah, um, might not have started a trend, but you popularized certain things. I'm not yeah. sure. I don't know the stats behind it. But, I, I like, some people will be like, um, Joey says he's the first at a lot of things. I don't never say i was the first i'm not the first at anything but i certainly did popularize a tremendous amount of genres within the aquarium hobby and yeah. you did it as well it's just tough to say that because all of a sudden you're arrogant you're cocky and blah 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 but at the same time you did now my question is why did you start the first second channel in the, in the first place um honestly just because i feel like i have other stuff to share that might not necessarily be that my audience might not enjoy on my channel and I don't want to upload it and kind of screw the algorithm for my main channel. So if what about, it was that like long, long form content for the second channel. So yeah, like I do um, a lot of people want to see like long form videos of my tanks, like legit a static half hour shot. Yeah. just, so yeah. I uploaded some of those people liked it. And, and it's like, cause there's a lot of content that people request that I want to give to them because mm -hmm. it's people that have been with my channel since you know the beginning and i recognize their avatars i don't know how you are with that but it's yeah. like it's like yeah. dude i know you were you've been with it the whole time and yeah. so like i want to provide that content for them but at the same time like i gotta make a living so i don't want to uh well, that, and my that's main the channel. catch 22 is like you kind of want to upload it to your main channel but it will destroy your channel's rankings and the mm -hmm. algorithm and some people will be like, well, who cares about the views? You just care about the views and the money. Well, no, I didn't spend the past decade building this channel yeah. just to throw it away. Yeah. Um, and uh, if it is your only source of yeah. income. So here's a second channel to, to kind of – that's why I didn't upload podcasts to my main channel. Nobody signed up for podcasts on my main channel. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it would have been financially smarter for me to do so, but I just respect my audience. And I thought, you know, if you want this, go to the other channel and get it. Yeah. yeah, and we'll we'll build that one over there, and that will be the podcast channel, and this will be my channel, mm -hmm. and the podcast won't even have my name, like King of DIY, I'll just Aquariums Unfiltered to have its own name, and um, no affiliation with my main channel, and that means we can have conversations with lots of people, if even if they don't like me or anything, that's something I'm excited about is like talk to people that don't like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because a lot of it's like 
m- made up made up misunderstood stuff yeah. taken out of context etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. and a lot of times somebody will talk to me and give me like it's a sentence away from from squashing all the beef and like yeah you know, yeah so that's that's I, exciting oh i God, i also worry. think that i mean podcasting's a little bit different of an artistic medium but i feel like being able to uh explore other things that you're interested in while still mm-hmm. being able to share it with an audience or your same audience or whatever it, it helps you with your main stuff too because it's like oh i tried something on that other channel that people liked and i could probably kind of tweak it a little bit to be something that's viable for the main channel too because like uh like i like to do woodworking i like to paint and stuff and i I kind of incorporate those sometimes on the main channel but i can't so like because people just aren't as responsive to it but you know what i'm saying it's just yeah well the thing i don't like podcasts for the longest time i was like i'm not listening to people talk for two three hours like that's that's a waste of time yeah and the problem was is like I just didn't like the podcast I was listening to. Mm-hmm. But once I found ones that I actually enjoyed, I was like, oh, yeah. this is different. And I'm enjoying this and I like it. It's more relatable. So I decided when I was going to do this podcast, a lot of people thought I was going to be doing interviews yeah. and topic driven discussions because that's what they were always given in the aquarium hobby and heck i even did it with my original podcast like five years ago Mm -hmm. they're all topic driven discuss it if it took me five minutes if it took me an hour we talked about that subject yeah but now i'm like that's that's nothing what we're doing it's completely different and i'm inspired by other podcasts that i like and i just enjoy the conversation yeah i think Uh, it's I think it's cool and because like I didn't really get podcasts for a while either and I don't really I don't watch them or listen to them that much rather I I listen to yours and like a couple others but uh it's cool to just hear other people's experiences and I think now especially whenever we're so cut off from other people it it, in a way like helps you feel not as cut off from the world isolated yeah Yeah, because because like i mean people who are busy like you or i we don't have time to be in our dms or texting people or calling people or whatever and whenever you uh are listening to that it's kind of like you're having an interaction with somebody but not really if that makes sense it kind of fills that void one of the things that i struggled with at first was people were upset with the way i talk like sometimes i talk over people or i cut them off or I touched my face too much or I didn't sit right or I didn't let you talk or this or like and I'm like I'm just talking and we're just discussing this we're not taking turns mm-hmm. um there's not this isn't an interview back and forth type of thing it's just a discussion just a conversation you would talk yeah. anywhere you and we're, I'm talk. we're talking and and Tanner's here with us yeah and we're talking with him too and he's included and yeah. then I oh man I gotta get this um did you hear me talking about I gotta get that little that little chair right here yeah like a little armchair for people to feel like they're sitting there I gotta <laughs> get that I don't know where I could get one maybe I can get a giant one like a little kids one that you actually build one yeah I'll just build like a little <laughs> well I kind of want it to be a um almost like a lawn chair yeah but we'll see how it is yeah, for me, I mean, I get excited about the topic, and I can't wait to sit. I can't. I gotta blurt it out, or I'm gonna forget. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should have a notepad here to things to bring up. But these podcasts be like four or five hours. Yeah, and uh, they're fun, but they they can't go that long. I mean, not everybody wants to talk that long. And on that note, Tanner, I <laughs> <laughs> cut. I will let Tanner get back to his uh his life, his wife, and his toad. Uh, what frog. are your ha, yeah, his frog? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm so disrespectful. Nah, that's fine. <laughs> that's like calling a koi a goldfish. <laughs> I did yeah. that to somebody before. He's like big into koi. I was like, man, oh. you, got, you got cool goldfish. He's like, they're koi. I was like, koi, goldfish, carp, same thing. <laughs> Wait, before you before you stop it, there was one more thing that I wanted to ask you about. Oh so, yeah, yeah. So now that you have a pond. Mm-hmm. how how has that changed your life because so maybe what was it two or three years ago i built my one out back for my goldfish yeah. well i was Dude. looking through your channel tonight and i was like i didn't know you had that and yeah. it's like a swimming pond i was like oh shit when did he upload this because <laughs> now it looks like it that looks like mine and now it looks like i got the idea from him and i'm emulating him and i was yeah, like that's different. not what happened it it's was a little down bit in, different yeah i how did you build yours I didn't um, watch the tutorial. I just seen the thumbnail and I and I and I like so, did the gulp like, like oh lord. So <laughs> I I dug it all by hand. I so I, I dug out the basin and so there's a whole story attached to this. I'll abbreviate it, but so I dug it whenever we first bought the house. 
And yeah. my wife wasn't happy about it because she's like, you should be fixing up the house and you're digging a pond. I'm like, I got to get the goldfish outside. They're getting too big for an aquarium. And I have all commons and comets, so they're going to get, you know, 10, 12 inches long or whatever. And um, so I started digging it and then I didn't finish it. Spring came and I was going to do it and it all caved in on itself. You can't finish it but digging it by hand. That is a nightmare just to dig the grass up. Brutal. Two hours in, your hands are blistered. <laughs> you're covered in dirt. Dude, it was bad enough with I, the little scoop we had. I jacked up my neck, and it hasn't been the same since. Like it cracks oh, all the fixed, time yeah. and stuff. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, uh, uh, so eventually, spring happened. It all caved in. I had to drain it and take it all apart and basically redig it. And so I had to dig it twice. It wasn't like I just had to dig it once. And it's t ten by twelve by three, so it's three feet deep 10 12, so it's what 1500 yeah, it doesn't gallons look that maybe big something. in the video yeah it's, it's mine is mine smaller than that or bigger than that no yours is bigger than that Yours is much deeper yeah yours, yours is, is six feet deep like you so, could swim swim so mm -hmm. it's probably like twice as deep yeah it's and, six feet deep and so yeah i dug it out and i put down some underlayment then i put down um the, the liner and around the perimeter like in the dirt i got uh four by fours pressure treated i got three to four of those stacked up and then i put rebar down through oh, yeah. them stapled the liner and the underlayment to that and then i put like a wood trim uh was yeah. it two by twelve it I actually think, looks pretty it. nice it looks pretty nice and that is a classic well the problem that he would have had to deal with is like that's not a pond why did you make oh, it square? yeah that's not natural have you ever seen a koi facility they're in concrete vats yeah. growing out koi that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars a piece that is the most the best way to keep koi it's mm -hmm. not in a aquascape pond yeah. that's arguably but um in a bare environment it's obviously going to to be the best uh, water quality possible yeah. do you swim in it i mean it's only three feet deep i mean and you're actually not that short how tall are you you gotta be uh, close to six feet yeah six two six three yeah see what do you <laughs> Must look like a child in a wading pool. <laughs> Dude, so I, I love it. So uh, I'll just I'll just sit in there. <laughs> I'll, I'll just I'll sit in there in the corner, and I'll, I'll you know I'll have like a whatever a wine with me or whatever. And I just, <laughs> in his kiddie pool. And, and I'm just, laughing because. It looks ridiculous. In my, dude, in my dude, when you come, we got to get a picture of both of us sitting in it. <laughs> Fine. But, and and the goldfish, they nip on your toes. They're really yeah. they're really personable. And so, dude, I love it though because I just it, I sit back there. Our neighborhood's pretty secluded, and it's all yeah. all woods around it. Super mm -hmm. quiet, and uh, I like the sound of the waterfall. But basically, the only reason I brought it up is I just was curious because like. I had always kept stuff inside for 26 years, however long it was before yeah. I did that. And same with you. How, do you think that that's something that you're going to explore more, or is it tough just because nah, I'm in Canada? Scotia? I mean, there's not much I can put outside. I mean, maybe some sturgeons or something. But I always think, like, if I was in Florida, yeah, oh boy, things would be things would be out of control real quick. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to when it comes to that pond, I mean, everything's so easy. Yeah, there's, there's so much water volume and water changes are so simple and um, it's so fun to swim in and it's yeah. so deep. And but we also only have like three months where we can be out and yeah. enjoying it. So ours, ours is um, ours is a little bit longer than yours. I'm in uh, PA, so it's I don't know. You're close to Rachel. Yeah, about three miles, uh, three miles w or three hours west. Do you guys ever link up and vi like exchange we, visits? We haven't visit visited each other in person but at aquashella i chauffeured her around everywhere and we you know we got to know each Bonded. other pretty well from there yeah. yeah and we talk now and again just through text we've sent plants to each other we're both like orchid oh, no nerds way. and stuff I yeah i had no idea you guys had a relationship on the side interesting That's and a conversation so i'm gonna have to have with her ask her to uh <laughs> send you a picture of her terrarium i sent her a terrarium kit and she has it on her that wall that's by her stairs i'm gonna tell her to break it Next time I'm there, I'm peeing in it. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I, how could wow. you do this to me? Oh, what's Tanner? Tanner's your new man. Was it because he's six foot two? <laughs> <laughs> she actually uh, she reached out to me and like so I knew her from back in the MFK days. I remember yep. her because of the you know the Mohawk yep, picture the Mohawk. and stuff. Yeah. And uh, so as soon as you like 
she made a channel. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember her. Yeah. So I subscribed. That's how I knew I her like, from the MFK days, too. Man. Then I went down to the States, found her there, and I was trying to convince her to get on YouTube and blah, 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 and it was months. And then I announced topic of the week. The first time I was going to do anything other than the do-it-yourself video in years, and she was the first person, I think, on my channel. Yeah. Um, and, you know, kind of snowballed from there. It's Rachel's fault that I got the gallery, basically. That's what it led up to. <laughs> Well, no. we need to have some kind of like thing where it's like if if you if you do something or like we need to have like a bet. It's like if you lose, you have to get a frog or a toad or something like that. And if I lose, then I got to get something out like something that you would keep that I wouldn't necessarily keep. I think we should leave it up to the to the viewers. In the yeah, comments section come on, below. Sur Serpa Squad, let's go, no. let's go. No. no, they're gonna abandon you for being a home wrecker with me and Rachel. <laughs> That's something Dude. I'm gonna have to uh, talk to my therapist about. You know, uh, keeps her employed. No, <laughs> <laughs> not letting it go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, I message Tanner. I'm on my way. I'll be, I'll be there tonight. <laughs> like, what? What? What's happening? <laughs> yeah. No. Well, my man. Hey, thanks for coming on. I certainly yeah, no appreciate problem. it. How does everybody find you? Uh, what's your links? Um. Serp I'm going to leave them in the description. But. Yeah, Serpa Design everywhere. Serpa Design on YouTube, Serpa Design on Instagram, and Serpa Design on TikTok. Those are the only socials that I'm actively using, and that's what it is. Yeah. And Tanner Serpa on Tinder. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was a <laughs> another episode. <laughs> get, it out of, get it out. Get it out of your system. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do a song like, like that? Can you play us out? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Give me one Our second. Our new music for the podcast. What? Our new podcast music. <laughs> Tanner's mouth songs. <laughs> 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 what is that what, is that, what that is? <laughs> That's what I sound like at night in bed. And then I put the covers over your head. <laughs> You love me, don't a, you? A, a Dutch mm. oven. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's <laughs> beautiful. I love it. Anyways, oh, yeah. ladies no and gentlemen, that was that was yet another episode of Aquariums Unfiltered. I absolutely understand if every single tank mate wants out of my aquarium right now. It never was to come back. But if you did enjoy it, make sure you subscribe and of course check out uh, Tanner and his toads over on his squad of serpas <laughs> or I don't know. I know I barely know. Serpa's my, la it. Serpa's my last name. It, it has nothing to do with snakes. Just throwing it out there. Serpent. <laughs> Tanner the Serpent. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Later.